Well, what have we here? What does this look like? What is that? Does that look like Chinese writing? I think it does. What kind of guitar could we possibly have here, huh? Yeah, it looks like that's one of those Gibsons. Yeah. Mojo Shop ain't never had one of them before. Look at that. Ooh, can you see that fretboard right there? Ooh, it's kind of streaky. Look at that's kind of nice. I kind of like it. We're going to go on out. Let's see what it looks like up here. Oh. Look at that. Why? What's it got on the back of this thing here? Let's see what it's got on the back. Let's turn it around real quick. Well, look at that. It's got a serial number and everything. Yeah, made in USA. What's that there? Does that say that does say Grovers? Yeah, but we know these are just some some fake Grovers. But the question is, can Mojo Shop Guitar turn this into a contender? Can we take this Chipson? It's already had all the guts and everything taken out of it. Look at that cavity. Why well, now it looks like they chewed it out with a they used a soup spoon to get it out of there or something. Well, let's turn it around here. Yep. She's not looking too bad. It's got a real nice finish on it. You know? And you can kind of tell that that's not a that's not a, uh, a Gibson burst. It's a little too dark. It doesn't fade in, you know, quite enough. It's not looking too bad. But the question is, can Mojo Shop turn this into a contender, into a top playing? Can, can she play as good as a Gibson? After the Mojo Man gets done with it? I have faith in the Mojo Man. So my answer to that question is, hell yeah, we're going to make it play as good as a Gibson. We'll make it live up to the name on the headstock, right? That is a nice, look at the streaks in that neck. Boy, once I get some stuff on that, make it shine, polish it up, it's really going to shine nice. So how about we take uh, Jason's other guitar, you know, Jason keeps reading the guitars, you know, once they get them mojo-fied, they, they want to get them all mojo-fied, you know, because they play so good, and it really does increase the value of a guitar, you know. When somebody, you know, you want to sell it, they put it in their hands and it feels like this and it plays like this and it sounds beautiful, it's worth more money. So, how about we take Jason's Chipson over to the bench and turn it into a legit player. Hey! And yes, sir, here we are over at the bench. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take all the take this thing down to its most take all the parts off it pretty much. Everything we want to take off. So get all the trusty dusty screwdriver here. Hey, hey, hey. And we're gonna take this pit guard off here. Tell you what we're going to do. We are going to go ahead and we're going to take the post out here. We're going to take this pick guard off. We're going to take the tuners off. Take the truss rod cover off. And I think we might even take the strap buttons off. So we're going to do that and uh, we're going to get all that kind of stuff taken care of and then we're going to be right back. Can you see that? That's what it looks like inside this truss rod cover right here. I went in there and I says there's no truss rod in there. But there is. It is way, way down in there. If you stick a Allen wrench in there, you can get a bite. And there's something down there that turns. But it sure don't look like no truss rod. 
because it is way, way, way down in there. I thought there was nothing in there. But yeah, that's the chips, and I could see why sometimes they would say, hey, it came with no truss rod at all, because it looks like there's just a hole in there. But uh, I stuck my other in there, and that's, there's something that turns in there, so I'm assuming it's a truss rod. So, yeah, that's one way these things are different. And there sure was a lot about a, about a lot of polishing compound in there. Look at that. So, yeah, looks like a gram of coke in there. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, that's just one of, the, one of the things I run into here. Yeah, one of the oddities about these guitars. All right, well, we got this uh, sucker broke down to its natural parts here. That truss rod cover. Trust right. We got that all clean out of that, all that stuff out of there, and that that the, the, the adjusting screw is you know the adjusting the adjuster is way down in there. Got a sticky wrench in there, way in there. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. You know, got some. Got to go around and clean it, clean it up. But the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna go in and we're gonna shield these cavities right here. We're gonna put some shielding in these cavities, and we're probably gonna. We're gonna put some around the back side too, because that's all, all uh, un unshielded. And we're gonna clean these cavities up the best we can, make them look, make them look pretty. So uh, we got all the rest of the parts off here. We got these little Grovers off there, you know, and they got a nice little tight turn to them. But you know, they had the screws on that you can adjust them. So that's what we're gonna do: adjust them so they feel real good. And we're gonna make sure that we lube these so that they last for a little bit long time. One of the other things that I know that you can pick, that you can tell that this is a. Um, a chipson is this truss rod cover here. You know, look at the, the, the printing on the top of it's kind of wearing off and stuff. And right along this edge right here, it is all kinds of, uh, you can see it's just sort of, you know, it's bumpy right around there. Like they like somebody chewed it off with their teeth, you know. You can kind of see it right there, you know, it's bumpy. Not good quality. And, you know, just a, you know, a few other little things. But uh, otherwise, everything's looking good. And we're going to go ahead and get this. Oh, I noticed something else too. Whenever I look at one of the screws for the, uh, um, how about we tighten in on that? If we can see it, this screw right here is like practically right into the, the, uh, it's into the cavity. There's hardly there's hardly anything hold it there. So, you know, some of the, you know the, it's just the little quality things, but you, know, you get what you pay for, I guess. So we're gonna seal these cavities here, and we'll be right back. All right, we got that. Uh, we got the uh, cavities all nice and, and uh, shielded down there. You see, it's all nice and black down there with the shielding paint and stuff like that. But now it is time to move on to the neck. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get out our tools here. If we can find them. Let's see where is my where's my straight edge? We were using it last night. Here it is. All right. If you watched this before, you know how this works. We're gonna make sure that this. Uh, well, first thing that we got to do is we got to get this uh, fretboard nice and nice and level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this straight edge right here. And we're just gonna put that across here, and we can't, we're gonna take our little floppy little uh, feeler gauge there, and we're just gonna kind of go up and down the neck and see where it's touching and where it ain't. And it's touching in the middle. But it's not touching on the end. In fact, you can see it. You see here, it rocks back and forth. That means the truss rod is way too tight. So what we got to do is we got to stick this in there. And it's way in there, so we might as well just do it like this here. Just to get it like that, and we're just going to turn that down a little bit. See if we can't take some of the take some of the bend out of this sucker. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of stick this under there. Just gonna kind of go like this, or we're just gonna kind of bend it. Try just trying to bend, help it go in the direction that I want it to go, and then we'll lay this back down here. We'll give it another whirl. See how it's looking. We'll make sure we don't stick it on the. Uh, I can tell it's still rocking, so it's still high. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn that down some more. Okay. And we're going to push on it some. Yeah, there still is some tension on that truss rod, so we're going to go ahead. 
And the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to say that I've heard that some of these have frets that aren't sitting right and stuff like that. So while I'm kind of waiting for this to adjust itself, for it to relax a little bit, so I'm just going to kind of help it a little bit. What I want to do is I want to take my magnifying glass and I want to go over these frets and just sort of take a good look at them to make sure that they're not sticking up or nothing like that so I don't have any problems with any of them. They all look pretty good. Yep, I don't think I'm going to have any problems with frets sticking up. Okay, so let's see if we got this. So it's going to be a little bit flatter. You stick that right in there. Well, it's a little bit better now, but I can still feel this. It's still. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to loosen this sucker right up. So it might be way too too tight to begin with. Okay, so we're going to give it a little loosen. And what we're going to do is we're going to loosen it up. See that it's been too tight. We're going to go ahead and loosen it up. See. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to get on here and we're going to push this down. And then what, what we'll do is we'll get it so that it's it's low in the middle, then we'll bring it back up because it's kind of like a string when you you want to you want to tighten you want to tighten your string, you want to tune your string up to the note, and that's kind of what we're doing here. We're gonna leave it a little bit slack, and then we're gonna tighten it up to the note or up to the up to level. So we're gonna be right back. We'll we'll go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. Alrighty. Well the truss rod wants to, I mean it's not really the truss rod, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is, but I still got a little bit, the fretboard is still a little bit high right here in the middle. And I'm not going to be able to level it until this uh, until this uh, neck relaxes a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to do some of the other work that it doesn't matter if it's, if it's level or not. We're going to do some of the other work on this. And then we're going to uh, let it set overnight and I'm going to put a weight uh, right here on the on the on the board so that it will help put some you know help push down on this and we'll come back in the morning and see what it's looking like and if it's you know sitting where it should be then we will proceed but we'll kind of go from there so one of the first things we're going to do is we're just going to kind of take uh, our wire brush here that I had just a second ago so what I do with it? oh yeah right here I like this nice little light brass brush here and what we're going to do is we're just going to go over the the fretboard with it and we're going to kind of clean up all this little crap that gets it down in the corners of the um, fretboard and just kind of give it a nice little, you know, we're just going to kind of give it a nice little brushing and a cleaning. And what that does too is it helps to kind of smooth out the fretboard here a little bit because, you know, it'll just kind of, just kind of freshens that up and smooths it out a little bit. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. All right. So we got the... Uh, Got the fretboard all buffed off real nice with the brush, and we rechecked our 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 level for cross here, and we're are good to go. We got it level. We got as level as we possibly can. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we are going to do the uh, do the frets on here, and we're going to get our, our marker out. Here we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this marker here, and we're just going to kind of make a line on the top of each one of these frets here, just like that. You know how it goes. We make a line on the top of the fret. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. See, we kind of make a little, little black mark on the top of the fret there. See, and we're going to go ahead and that way when we once we fret this or once we level it, when we take all the marker off the top of the frets, we know that we've got it all off there. And if we get done taking the, I'll get the marker on there. We're going to take this leveling beam here that has just a little bit of sandpaper on it right here, and. Uh, we're going to go ahead, this one we're just going to go back and forth and back and forth, sanding over this. And this has a real smooth, real piece of smooth sandpaper that hardly takes anything off there at all. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll get, when we take all the marker off those frets, we know we're nice and level. So we'll be right back after we do that. All right, now that we got all of the uh, black marker off the top of those frets there, we're going to take, so what we did is we flattened out the top of that fret with the, when we leveled it, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a point on that fret again, so that it, when you bend the string, it slides right across there, because it's supposed to be a point, not a, not a flat spot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our good old fashioned, our good old trusty dusty fret file here. We've got to take our fret file, and we're going to go over this fret, over these frets, just like this. 
we're just gonna kind of what we're doing is we're filing the this this has a little this is a little V right in here it's a little V and what it does is it puts a nice it files a point right on top of that fret there so we just go over it like this until we feel it get kind of smooth and then we know that we've that we've got it all crowned and we're just going to do that to all these frets all the way up and down the, the neck and then we'll be on to the next step all right we got all the um frets all filed down real nice there's a nice little point top on each one of them and the next step is to we'll go ahead and we want to round over these ends of these frets right here we're just going to take this little file right here and we're just going to kind of go over and around that top we kind of want to we're just sort of rounding over that edge a little bit and we're going to go over it just like that and we come back from the other side and we'll go over it like that and what we're doing is we're rounding over this end of this fret so that when your finger rubs over it you see and feel the difference already just in those couple right there it's practically in you, you can't even notice it but over here you can still feel a little bit of sharpness so that's what we're doing we're trying to move any, any traces of anything sharp along this edge in fact along both edges so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll we're going to do all these little frets and we're going to round them all over so they're real nice and smooth and when we get done with that we'll be right back all right now that we have all the little fret ends taken care of right here we, we went and, just, and, and filed all the fret ends down we're going to take just a little piece of uh, old sandpaper here we're just going to kind of go over the edge of this and what we're doing is we're just trying to get rid of some of those filing marks and stuff off the edge and just we're starting our, our smooth it down we're going to try to smooth this all down we uh, get it filed, get them filed, now we're just going to kind of run over them with a, with a piece of 600 sandpaper, nothing real aggressive, just something, you know, just kind of start wearing that down a little bit, smoothing it out, and we're going this way over it so that it, it, it uh, you know, gets in there and it roots over those edges. Now one of the other things that I want to do too, is I want to roll over this edge here this edge is just a little bit sharp it's not real bad but what we're going to do is we're going to make it so this just a little bit more rounded and just a little bit more un uh, comfortable this edge right here just you know it's got the binding on there and it, it's not too bad right now but it needs just a little bit of something something to make it feel just that much more comfortable so what we're going to do is we're going to take this little scraper edge right here and all we're doing is we're just kind of going over the edge of that and we're just kind of rolling it over it's called this is called rolling the edge and that's all we're doing we're just kind of rolling the edge and we're not taking off any hardly anything we're just taking off little tiny shavings just little tiny shavings and that makes that feel just that much more uh, comfortable when you go over it so what we're going to do is we're going to roll this edge all the way on both sides and we're going to go over the whole neck just a little bit we're over the whole fretboard sides and top with this piece of 600 sandpaper and then we will be right back after that all right let's see here we leveled the frets we crowned the frets we've went over the frets with some 1500 well we went over with 16 600 we did all we did the fret ends we rounded the, the edges of the fretboard Go for a little bit of stuff or something right there. No, you got your your hand is your best friend in this in this deal. You know, you go through here and you feel what's what what needs to be still done. And I see there's a few more things that need to be done on there. So, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And we're gonna wipe this down real nice, get some of the schmutz off of here. You know, get it nice and clean. And I think we might just go ahead and wipe the whole body down, get everything nice and clean on it. That's one of the things that makes the difference. You know, you'd, be, you'd be surprised that clean makes the difference on, on a guitar. You know, it really does. Of course, a little grunge on it sometimes is a badge of honor, isn't it? So we're gonna take a little rubbing alcohol, just pretty much wipe everything off on here. We got those cavities all shielded up real nice. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little wipe down here. Tool all the way so we're not stretching it all up. Hey, we don't want to do that. You know, just get a little 
little bit of rubbing it all, all over the place, get a little bit of that old stuff taken care of. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, this one's going to turn out all right. It's going to be just fine. Okay, now that we've got to wipe down a little bit, got most of the schmutz off of it. A little bit of the back of the head stock there and make the neck. Okay. Alrighty, uh, let's see. What do you think the next step is? I think the next step is going to be we are going to um, we're going to just, we're going to get these, there's a little bit of fret sprout here. We're going to get just a little few things along this edge of this uh, fretboard. What we'll do is we'll just We'll take wherever we feel anything, we'll just kind of feel along here. And wherever we feel anything that don't feel right, we'll just go in there and we'll touch it up with the file. And sometimes the very, very end of the fret will stick up just a little bit. So we'll have to make sure that those get done. And I can feel a few over on this side that are doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to give the ends of these frets just a little tiny, tiny bit more love until we can't feel anything on there. Okay, let's see here. We have the fretboard all leveled up. We got a little stuff like that. We went ahead and we finished getting all these little things down here. Man, I'm telling you, think this is smooth, Jack. There ain't nothing on there. Nothing. We got it all nice and smooth. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna polish these frets up. So what we're gonna do, we got them all nice. We're gonna take a little bit of our good old polishing compound here, a little chrome polish, and we're going to take one of our, one of these here, what this does is it kind of protects the fret, what we do is we get down here, let's take a tighten in a little bit, we're going to take some of this here, Ooh, what was that, getting dangerous in here, anyways we're going to take a little bit of this here, we're going to put it on the end of this rag, a little bit of that there, chrome polish, and we're just going to take that and we're going to Put it right across the top of this fret here. And we're just going to polish up that fret real good, just like that. Until it's nice and shiny. And we'll move on to the next one. This does a real nice job of getting them nice and smooth and silky. So that when you bend a string, man, that sucker just slides right across there. And, you know, I, and I got my finger on this, and it's just that you don't feel anything. You don't feel anything. It's just smooth. And look at that right there. Look at that right there. Can you see how much shinier that is than the other one? Let's see where we can win a little bit. Yeah, how shiny that is. I don't know if you can really see it. Yeah, you really can't see it. But we are going to go ahead and we're going to polish every last one of these frets all the way up and down the neck. And then we're going to wipe it down with some alcohol to get it nice and clean. And then the next step is one of those secret things that we do that nobody else does. So you stay tuned here and we will be right back. Alrighty, now that we have the uh, fretboard all, the, the, the frets all polished up real nice. The next thing we're going to do, something nobody else does, we're going to take this here buffing wheel. So I'm going to plug in, we're going to take this here buffing wheel right here. We're going to buff the... We're going to buff this neck right up nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a mean little polish on all those frets. But that's not the, that's, we're going to do it, we're going to polish those frets up real nice. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, you can see that, that put a nice little shine on there. Let's let's tighten it in a little bit here. Hey, look at that. See, it's got a nice little shine on the fretboard. Those are nice and shiny. The fretboard's all buffed up. But we are not done. If you know how we operate, 
We ain't done with this net. Got a couple more things to do on it. Now I just want to take this side. Let me see. We get another rag there. So we got a little bit, of, a little bit of clean cleanliness to it. A couple of clean spots. We're just gonna take this and we're just gonna wipe this off right here. You know, it's just giving. You know, a lot of this is just giving this, wiping it down and, you know, keeping it clean. Just doing things right. Just kind of doing things right. Now, what we're gonna do? See, we've had alcohol on this thing. In fact, I think I'm going to clean it off one more time with some rubbing alcohol. Just one more time here. Because what we're getting ready to do next needs a nice clean surface. And I like the rubbing al alcohol because it gets all the grime and grease and stuff off there. But it doesn't soak in. It doesn't get the wood wet and it dries right up. As you can see, I'm done wiping and it's already dried up. Water never would have done that. So, we got this all uh, taken care of here. And it's, well, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, the wood's kind of dry. It needs some hydration. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this coconut oil. And that's what we do. We take a little bit of coconut oil, put it on the end of our finger. We just sort of go up and down. We're going to spread this all over on this fretboard here. And I like the coconut oil because it doesn't soak in too much. It's not an oil. I mean, it is an oil, but it doesn't, you know, it's not a liquid oil. It's kind of a, you know, kind of like shortening kind of, you know. It's a, it's a little bit thicker, but as soon as it hits your fingers some, some, some temperature, it becomes a liquid. And that's kind of why I like it, because it's not, you know, it's not it's going to soak into the oil or into the wood. We don't want things that are going to soak into this wood. We don't want to get it wet. We don't want to get it soft. We just want to get it hydrated and nice and happy. And that's what we're doing right now. Just kind of going over and rubbing it in. Got to get it all in all those little cracks and crevices and stuff like that. Okay, we got some of that on there. Put the lid back on it. Set it back on the shelf. And now we're just simply going to take this rag again. And we're just going to wipe it off. Just going to wipe it off. And you can see how much better that looks already. Look at how nice that shines. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Just a little bit of oil on that neck. But we don't stop there, no siree, Bob. See, you know, this oil can be a little bit, or when you, you know, your fretboard is, hey, it's nice and, it's nice and smooth, but still, it's, uh, you know, it could be a little bit better. It could be a little bit smoother, you know? That's the whole key, is getting everything smooth down here. Get it all nice and level and smooth, and we're getting there. Look how nice this, this is turning out. Oh my gosh, it is just, it's, it really is smooth. It really is. It really is. You know, there's, there's a, you know, you, you, you get in there and you feel, you feel and you feel and you feel. Your fingers are your best friends. You get in there and feel where everything is. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, our next step is, you ever uh, polish a floor? Make it real, real shiny? We we'll take a little bit of wax here. So we're going to take a little bit of this kind of car wax here. We're going to take a little bit of that. We're just going to put it on our finger here. And we're going to spread that in. We'll put a little bit on our fretboard. Because, you know, wood loves wax. You know, we're going to wax this floor, Jack. That's basically what we're doing. This is wood, you know. And wood likes to be waxed. And what we're doing here is this wax is going to get into all those little microscopic crevices and stuff on this fretboard. And it's going to fill them in. It's going to get in there and it's going to lay down. That's going to uh, fill in all the cracks so it makes just a, a little bit flatter, smoother surface. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're looking for to make this fretboard just as flat and this, as, as smooth as we possibly can. And you know, these uh, rosewood fretboards or whatever kind of wood this is here, you know, this dark wood, non maple fretboards, um, they, you know, uh, like kind of like if you had a maple fretboard, have they lacquer that, you know, they put some, they put a, 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 some clear on it make it nice and slick. Well, they don't do that to these. I mean, they can, but on, on most, uh, like, uh, you know, ebony fretboards or rosewood fretboards or something like that, it's just natural wood. So what we do is put a little wax on there so it makes it even, makes it almost as slick as if you put some clear on there. Let me put it that way. We just get that stuff right in there. And what we'll do is we'll get down there just like that, and then we're going to let this dry. And guess what? We're going to come back one more time with that buffing wheel. Buff that sucker out so it polishes so dang shiny, man. And you know, when you get done, your fingers are gonna be like, when you try to play, it's gonna, whoop, it's gonna slide right off. Man, it's gonna be as slick as, as slick as it can be. 
But we'll be right back when this dries and we get ready to buff it. All right, while we're waiting for the wax to dry on the neck, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take some of our good old polishing compound here. Now this is a real microfiber, it's just a, you know, it's a clean finish. There, there's hardly anything to it, it doesn't really do anything. I mean, it does something, but it doesn't, you know, it's not aggressive or anything like that. It's not, we're not taking stuff. No, we're not getting, getting busy on this thing, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to just take a little bit of this, and we're just going to put it on the body. And what this does is it takes out all the little fine scratches and all the little scuff marks and all the just the little, the little junk, and it just fresh, kind of freshens things up real nice. Just kind of spread it around, get a little bit everywhere. I'm just going to do the front. This time we'll do the front and then we'll go around, we'll do the back and the sides and all the other stuff. And the head side. So, so we'll just kind of get it on here, we'll just kind of rub it around a little bit. A little bit of a circular motion. It kind of cuts all the you can you get, get all the little scratches and all the little little marks and stuff out of there. Yep. And this is what we do. We take these, you know, we want it to, you know, we want it to look nice. We want it to have some wow factor. When you open up that case, man, we want this sucker to look good. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to just flip it up here on the side. We'll get a little bit of this on the sides down here. I put a little bit of too much on the front, so we'll spread it out a little bit on the sides. buddy it's gonna turn out real nice you know maybe these uh chips ain't so bad after all I didn't like that truss rod though that's one that I did not like so you know if it's you know you gotta have basic function functionality with something you know if you don't get that well then you know it's really no good okay we got a little bit of that on the front there now let's just take our rag again a clean rag or cleaner rag and we're just going to wipe that off real nice. And that just, we'll just leave a little bit of a haze on there. And then we'll come back later and we will get that all nice and cleaned off. And we'll buff it up some more so it looks even feels nice and shiny when we're finished. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that to the back and the headstock and stuff. And when we get done with that, we'll be right back. All right, we got the body all polished out and stuff like that, and you can see that it is looking a little just a little bit hazy. But once we get some um, some polish on that and get it all nice and wiped down and stuff, it's gonna look real good. Now let's tell you what. Let's go back over to this neck here. I think we got our our stuff is all dry, so we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna buff, buff that off with the buffing wheel. Make it real, look real shiny. Make it look real nice. Well, looky there, looky there. Look how nice that looks. And it, oh my, that is so smooth, and so is the fret. That is really smooth and shiny. You know, it, uh, that buffing wheel makes the difference, is what, what the, real, the real truth is there, is that buffing wheel makes the difference. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just wipe this off a little bit. Cause that buffing wheel does leave, leave a little bit of dust behind. So we just get that nice and clean, and then we get it nice and wiped off, and oh man, look at that, looky there, looky there. That is smooth, that is smooth. 
you know, you run your finger across there, you don't feel anything. You don't feel nothing. The, 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 yeah, that's, that's the way a neck is supposed to feel right there, I'll tell you one thing. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come back down here to the body. Okay. Okay. All right, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, take some of our... Boop -a -doop -boop -boop. Some of our spray wax here. I like this stuff because you can just spray it on, wipe it around, it makes it look beautiful. It doesn't take too much to get it to get it looking nice, you know. And uh, we're just putting a preliminary. We're trying to get this all nice and finished up and, and coated and stuff like that before we start putting it back together. Then once we get done putting it back together, we're going to give it one more cleaning, wiping, shining, polishing. Crimping, dripping, you know, everything. You know, it's going to be, like, hey, hey, no stone on the train. Everything's going to look good. So we just spray a little bit of this on there. We're just going to take another one of our one of our uh, clean rags, and we're going to go over this and just wipe this around. I really did like this stuff. It worked good on the car, and I decided to try it on the guitars, and, man, it works good on them, too. Works good on everything. It's just a real nice little little wax. And that's fact, I, it really works good because I, I got a little bit of it on my floor with on the last... Uh, guitar that I was doing. I got a little sprayed a little bit around the floor and man there's a little slick spot right there. People break still breaking their neck on it. You know, so whoop. Okay. That is looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, buddy. Oh yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's looking pretty shiny, ain't it? Alright, tell you what, let's go ahead and we're gonna go wipe off the rest of this and we'll be right back after that. Alright, we got the body all polished up real nice. Look at that! It's like a, almost like a tobacco burst, isn't it? But it looks it look it looks may look brown brownish on the on the uh, screen, but it's kind of reddish in, in real life. We get that out of the way. We can show you the rest of it. So we got the cavity nice and shielded up right there. We got the back cavity nice and shielded up. We got that cavity nice and shielded up in there. Everything's nice. Back looks real nice and shiny. And there's a couple of dings and dents on this thing, but. Oh, they're actually looking pretty good. Back of the headstock. Front of the headstock cleaned up real nice. Nice and shiny. It's got a couple fingerprints on it. That's good to go. We're going to put a new nut in it. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just about ready to start putting it back together. Got the, the fret bar all leveled and everything like that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start uh, investigating as to what we need to do next as far as putting our Maybe we'll start putting uh, electronics in and stuff like that. Heck, you never know. We just might do that. So we'll be right back. Okay. We are back, and we have a little surprise. We are going to put some real good stuff in this. Uh, little chips in over here and stuff. Well, you know, you're going to have to if you're going to make it, you know, make it contend with the Gibson. So what we're doing is we're going to put a pair of these Fishman Fluents pickups in there. Real nice. You, know, you see that right on there? They got that little swoop across in front of them. Now these are a pair of, uh, this was a demo set that we got for, uh, that the owner, Jason, got for a real, real, real good deal. And this kit comes with everything you need. It comes with the pots. And it has the uh, uh, push-pull pots. And it also comes with all of the hardware and wiring and stuff like that. It is pretty much, it's not solderless, but there's very little soldering to do in here. Uh, most of it is just uh, pl plugs in right to the back of the pickup here. See, you just plug the wiring right into the back of the pickup right here, whichever one you want. And this, this pickup can have a, uh, a couple of different voicings and stuff like that. So you can kind of customize the pickup to uh, the kind of sound you're looking for. Anyway, it also comes with the d wiring diagram and stuff like that, which basically I need... Couldn't do without with this. I, I couldn't put it in without this. But yeah, we're going to take a look at this. And we're going to get the, all this stuff installed into the uh, guitar. And uh, it comes with a whole lot of wiring and stuff like that. In fact, we'll open up the box here. I'll show you what it comes with. It comes with this little box right here. And it's got all the wires and uh, the battery. The place where you hook the battery up on stuff. And just everything that you need to uh, get, you, get this installed. It comes with everything but the soldering iron and the solder for you. And a screwdriver so we're going to go ahead and we are going to get these installed into the guitar all right well we're back folks and it took a little while 
to get that uh, all that in there. You know, it was a uh, quite a little bit there. You know, remember the wiring diagram? There was, you know, it was quite a bit of soldering and just figuring it out, and making sure that everything was right. But we got it all straight. So now we have the pickups installed. We have the pots installed. You know, we can go ahead and put the uh, back plate on it too if we want to. We can find it. It's around here someplace. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, as you can see, we got the electronics all, all in there. All we have to do is hook up a battery to it. And we're going to go in here and uh, t tighten up these wires just a little bit and try to get them a little bit more, more uh, looking a little bit better. But uh, for right now, we're just going to go ahead and put the back on this because we want to keep this uh, all closed up so it uh, stays nice. So go like that. No, it goes like that. There we go. Okay, we're going to put, put the screws back in there. And where's my trusty screwdriver? There we go. Put the, just put the screws back in there. And then we were going to turn around and we're going to do... Put the uh, two hundred in it. Yay! What do you know? Get closer. The screw, and you notice how you always hang on to the screwdriver with two hands so that you don't have an accident. It's, you know, put a screwdriver across the back of the guitar. All right. I get that all done. All right, let's flip it over. She's looking pretty good. Tell you what. Well, we got it in the shot right here. How about we put some posts in there? Put some posts here. We got a couple posts right here. We got a couple posts right here. A couple posts. Put that on in there. Okay. Now I'm hoping that when we get this bridge on here, and we get it all strung up and everything like that, that the intonation is going to be good. We're going to be able to do something with that. Everything will be straight on it. Just keep your fingers crossed. That was crooked. The little button there was crooked. The switch switched real nice. Okay, let's see if our bridge fits on there. Good. Sure does. It should. It came from there. Okay, so we're not going to fool around with that right now. I just want to make sure that all stays on there. All goes on there. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our tuners in. So, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to move the camera on down. Hold on, let me get the tuner junk out of here. Tell you what, no, 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 no. we got to do something else too first. we got to put some knobs on this little, little bugger, huh? Huh, huh, huh? So let's see here. If we turn it up to 10, it's going to be right there. Turn it down, so we'll put that right there on 10. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's right, that's turned up, so we'll turn them all, all the way up. Okay, so we put start them off on 10. There's 10. And there's 10. And there's 10. I'll turn down to zero. Look at that. That looks pretty sweet. Not too bad. Not too bad. Look at that. That's a nice little shot right there. Look how those, the colors, and the um, stripes in the wood. You know the flames in the wood. You know they they really it looks pretty nice. With those knobs and stuff on there. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get these uh, tuners out here. So, but we do that there. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, we move the camera down a little bit, just right down here, and then we will move the guitar down a little bit, right down here like this. All right, we get it right over here. There we go. All right, let's get some tuners on this sucker. Huh? What do you say? Maybe we'll tighten it a little bit. Maybe we'll just move on down a little bit more. Hey, hey, what do you know? There we go. Oh, that's better. Hey. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's get the sandpaper out of here. 
close up that drawer. Okay. We're going to go ahead and start putting some tools on here. So put that right through there like that. And then we get one of these here bushings and go right over there like that. Start to tune it down a little bit. Okay. We get another one. Stick it up underneath there. Just like that there. And put it on my thingies. Ah, there we go. Put those on there. The thing about it is we're going to go ahead and put these right on there and we're going to put the, we'll turn it over and put the screws in the back and when we get all these put on there we are going to, I'm going to show you how to adjust the tension on them so that um, they feel just right. Okay, so we're going to be right back after we get these installed. Alright, we got all the tuners installed there and they sure do look nice right there right back in the same spot but what we're going to do now is see they're a little bit hard to turn so what we're going to do is we're going to take these little screws that are right in the ends of the of the uh, handles here or the you know and we're going to we're going to loosen those up just a little bit and we're going to get it so that it turns just the way we want it to and that's basically what you do with those you get them all to the same thing and then they're not too hard and they're not too soft not too easy so we're going to go ahead and do that Well, folks, we got the knobs all on it and the controls all in. We got the pickups in. We got the, the selector switch and everything all in. We got the tuners all back in. We got the neck all done. Body's all polished up and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I think it's that time where we go ahead and put some strings on it. And you know how we roll with that. You know, we got some strings here. Hey. Oh yeah. Here's what we got. We got a pack of these Ernie Ball 9 through 42s. Oh yeah, baby. We're gonna stick them on there. Because them are the official strings of Mojo Shop Guitar. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Let's get some strings on here. Alright, where's our bridge here? I mean, where's our, our tail piece at? We gotta find our tail piece. Here she is right here. Make sure she fits on there good and everything. Looks like it's going on no problem. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. Now let's see. I think we're just going to wrap this the regular old, old way. We're not going to top wrap it. Well, we might top wrap it. What do you say? What do you say? Top wrap or not top wrap it? We, we're going to top wrap it. Let's, let's see. Let me see how these strings go through here first. That's always the determining factor. Whether or not the strings go through the... the uh, Thing right. So put it in there like that. And no, I think we're just gonna string it up the regular way. I think that's gonna be the best way. The regular way. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna string it up the regular old way. Okay, so we're going to get some strings on here, and the next thing we're going to do is we're putting another string down here at the bottom so we can keep this thing on, we'll put the nine on, put the top one and the bottom one on, first to hold things together. It'd be nice if I got a bridge in there too, wouldn't it? Yeah, it might help get the bridge on there. There we go. Oh, let's get it all the way on. There we go. There we go. Okay. We got that. Hold on. We got that. Hold on. Okay. All right. Now we're just going to do our. Tell you what. When we get this thing all strung up, we'll be right back. All righty. We got her all strung up here. She's looking good. But, the, but you know. It ain't sounding good, so we gotta set the string height here. So let's get out of our trusty, crusty popsicle here, and we're gonna measure this here string height right here at the 12th fret. So how about we move on down to the 12th fret here? Get everything situated so we can actually see what we're doing here. You know what I mean? I'm gonna want to tighten in a little bit. Okay, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come over here to the 
12th fret, which is uh, right here, right here, right here, okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the, well, let's my little widen back out. We're going to adjust the post on the saddle right here so that we raise up the string height. So at the 12th fret, we got 2 millimeters on this side, and we'll have 1.6 millimeters on that side. So we're just going to go ahead and turn this until we get 2 millimeters right here. Hopefully we will. Just about there. All right, I'd say that's right there. Okay. And now we'll get us a little bit of 1.6 over on this side. There we go. getting there all right that's 1.6 right there well it's doing something all right tell you what how about we try tuning it up and we'll see what we got going on here so I'm going to go ahead and tune it up and see what we got going on. Hey. Well, we got her all adjusted up. We got the we got the pickups adjusted, the right height. We got the relief set. You know, I was having a little trouble with that uh, truss rod. But we got it so that it is, so we got enough relief in the neck. We got the notes that are playing perfectly up and down the, up and down the neck. We got everything taken care of, and she's really doing good, you know? It is looking beautiful. Let's try to widen out a little bit. Ah, oh, yeah, just a little bit. See, it's looking beautiful. The back's looking good. Everything's looking good. We got the tuners on her. Shame it's not a real Les Paul. It's playing pretty good. I wouldn't say it's playing as good as the Les Paul. But it's playing pretty good. About as good as I'm going to get it. There's a few things on here I change. But for the for the money, I think it's a decent guitar. As you can hear it's it's very uh, acoustic. And I can't feel some vibrations. And it does sound pretty good because every note plays nice and clean and clear. So, you know, even if you do have a, an inexpensive or, let's say, cheap guitar, you know, as long as you've got the notes playing all the way up and down the fret, more nice and, nice and clean and clear and in tune, all the way up and down the neck, it's going to make your guitar sound better. So, you know, just about any guitar can sound decent and, you know, play pretty good too. This sucker plays pretty good. You know, it doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be expensive. You just got to get it in the right hands of the person who's going to take it and make it, make it playable for you, make it something great. And, you know, guitars don't start off great. You know, they have to, they have to be put into the hands of someone, you know, with, with some skills that can bring the best of the guitar out. And that's when you know when you know you know a guitar has had that done to it when you put it in your hands and you feel it and you you hear how clear it plays and you you just get that little feeling out of it it's just got a nice feeling to it and you can uh, you know express yourself and be creative it's just well, looks like another successful build. But you know what? I'm anxious to see what it hears, what it, what it hears like. I didn't know it could hear. I'm anxious to see what it sounds like. I hear what it sounds like. Sweet mother of all pearl. But uh, yeah, let's take it over and uh, check it out. Let's take it over and see what she sounds like. Yeah, baby.
All right, this is the part of the show where we take a look at her. We put give it a play. Tell you what, let's go ahead and Jason's got a brand new, brand new gator case. He gator done. All right, there's one flipper, two, three, and four. I don't think there's one around the back. Nope, there ain't. Okay, here we go. Let's see what she looks like. Whoo, dang. Dang, son. It's a little sweet. Yeah, she turned out real, real good. She looks real, real beautiful in there, don't she? Oh, yeah. Tell you what. Let's get her out of this. Get her on over here. See what she sounds like. All right, well, we got it all. We got a strap on it, see? Hey, 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 that means it's ready to play. We got it all plugged in. It's all right, go. Look at that beauty. Boy, the light sure does, does favorable things to that. It ain't doing favorable things to my face right now, though. I don't think. Oh, there we go. Now we're trying to adjust a little bit. I don't know, maybe you don't like that light, so. Anyway, that's in the middle position. Let's try this up there in the, the neck pickup. Wow. You know, that amp, my amp is like barely, barely even turned up. This thing is way louder than most guitars. And it's got a lot of...
sounds real good it plays real good those fishermen fluids pickups are well I recommend them let me put it that way you want something that's gonna give you just give you a plain old great sound I'd take a pair of them fishermen any day of the week you know well, man this thing's turned there sure turned out the only things I probably would have done better is I'd upgraded the tuners a little bit but that's for another future modification right there so we're going to go ahead and say that this is a good one. You know, if you want to get your guitar mojo fied, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to hook you up. So, we're going to say adios for now. Mojo Shop Guitar. Thank mm -hmm. you.